everyone for joining us for our program cultivating spiritual excellence i'm brother marshall and our host is none other than dr marshall we also have our deacon donovan on the controls and i want to welcome everyone tonight before we get into tonight's teaching i want to thank everyone for showing their support for the sixth annual boat ride for choice gospel radio and I want to thank everyone that is continually reaching out to us, sending us email, etc. We thank God for you. And we're praying that God is doing something great and amazing in your life. Before we get into tonight's teaching, let us pray. Father God, I thank you. Lord, I give you all the honor and I give you the praise. Father God, because this is truly a unique honor to be in your presence. I'm praying, Lord, Father God, as... We're about to begin tonight's teaching, Lord, that you will just minister to each and every one of our hearts tonight, Lord. I pray that you will increase, Father God, as we decrease. I'm praying for the minister tonight, Lord, Father God, that you will just bless him and you bless the word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. At King James Bibles and get ready to hear from the Lord. Saints, Dr. Marshall. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It's truly an honor to be with you one more time on Choice Gospel Network FM 92.9. It's your life, your salvation, and your choice. Now, if we have been a blessing to you, please consider, consider being a blessing to us on Choice Gospel Network. And we pray that God bless you richly in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we want to begin on the subject matter Qualifications of leaders in the church You know to even hold a good job You ought to be qualified And you ought to study And get some distinction It's so also in the kingdom of God And the text in consideration is 1 Timothy chapter 3 Verses 1 through 14 and we would like to read those verses and take our time and do an expository work in it and see what God would say to his people tonight. Now from verse 1 says, This is a true saying, If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, 
given to hospitality, apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker. Not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. Not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruled well his house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double tongue, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience, and let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children and their own house well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. So this is Paul here writing to Timothy, a young man in the Lord. Hallelujah. Now what I realize that the call of God to the office of pastor God has specific rules and he have an outline for leadership in the church. But we're living in a day, folks, just ordaining anyone, giving anyone title, you know, without being proven. So we want to look at the list according to God's word. And that's why Paul said, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. So, the office of leadership, pastor, deacon, elder, is an office that God outlined the requirements. Now, the pastor and his preaching event must be built around spiritual and biblical foundation. If you are to preach God's word, you have to have a spiritual foundation. That means you have to study to show yourself a proof unto God. Now, if a pastor or a minister or elder, we will check the difference, the name. There's no difference. They have, they have three names or three titles in the church. Elder, bishop, pastor. means the same thing. But if the pastor or elder have to make the difference in the lives of people, first, the man himself must be called of God to the task of preaching. Because we see the bishop here. We see a man, right? If a man desire. According to the Bible, the bishop is a man, right? He must be called of God to the task of preaching. Second, he must have an unapologetic commitment to the nature and the rule of God's word. You can't apologize for God's word. It's not your word. It's God's word anyhow. And all scriptures is given by the inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for teaching. So that's why the word of God is inspired by the Holy Ghost. And anointed men of God wrote that the Spirit move upon them. So these were not ordinary men. There was ordinary men who filled and anointed by the Holy Ghost for that special assignment. So a preacher is anointed and called for a special assignment. Third. He must be humble, compassionate, and committed to the worship of God and the true and living God and no false God. Fourth, the preacher must be diligent in an unending quest for the anointing of God for his life and ministry. So he had to be in constant communication with God to be used by God. Hallelujah. 
he must be a man of prayer who see God for advice and wisdom. Now what I'm looking at lately in the church, the lack of training is not the lack of training is not uncommon among various organizations in the church. If you have an academic education, you pay a good tithe, you're faithful, folks just say, oh, and ordain them and, and, and anoint them and you know, without even the call of God on their life. So that's why sometimes the church are being messed up in many ways, but they still have true servants of God. Glory to God, that is good. Now, training men and women for future leadership and ministry is very lacking. If you notice, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ spent significant time in his public ministry training the disciples for the future. So when he returned to heaven, they could have continued the work and we also are continuing the work that he left for the servants of God to continue. Hallelujah. Jesus patiently poured himself into 12 men training them to be future leaders of the church. He was a master teacher and mentor. But strange, he had 12. Somehow the devil got in there. Hallelujah. So we have to be wise. Glory to God. You know, we believe that our servant elders understand spiritual oversight and care. We must believe that when a man stands up and, and representing God, we believe that the elders understand spiritual oversight and care. But in fact, our churches are filled with elders who confess that they are unprepared and untrained for the work. Even biblical schools and seminaries, for the most part, do not prepare men and women to provide spiritual care and leadership for the congregation. But we as leaders must be well equipped to serve the master. Now, if you desire to be an elder or a bishop, it's a good work. Do you feel you are called to leadership? Now, this is dangerous ground. You know, many folks say we could, you know, start a church or do this because we can make a lot of money. But you best be careful because Christ is still ahead of the church. Now, the, the, the term pastor is a lofty term. That's why folks love to be pastors. As they get saved, all of a sudden they want to be pastors. The three different worms refers to the same office in the local church. The word elder in the Greek, which means Presbyteros, from which comes the word Presbyterian. The word referred to a mature age character who save and well study God's word to show himself approved. The word Bishop is the Greek word Espikos, from which comes our word Episcopal. This word means overseer or guardian. So a pastor and a bishop or an elder is an overseer or a guardian. They are under shepherd and Christ is the chief shepherd. Hallelujah. Now this familiar word in the New Testament, they use pastor predominantly. Hallelujah. All three terms are used in the church as leaders. We find it in 1 Peter 5, 1-3. Now Paul, the apostle, wrote to young Timothy regarding the character of one called to such an office. The list of qualifications we would see right here in 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7. And we read it before. But let's go over the list carefully. This is a true saying, so we know it's not false. If a man desires the office of a bishop, so a pastor and a bishop is an office held by an individual, ordained and called by God, to such a task. A bishop then must be blameless. Hallelujah. He speaks of a good character. Blameless. So that means, now, people will say we all are false and we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but we must be blameless. According, let's go according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. Blameless, the husband of one wife. Hallelujah. So we know how much wives to have, right? One. Believeness speaks of good conduct. You can recommend anyone with good conduct. Hallelujah. 
Because if you recommend someone and they don't have to conduct your problems, then you could not recommend anyone else. So that's one of the first requirements. Conduct. He must be blameless. Hallelujah. The husband of one wife. Hallelujah. One wife husband. And no assistant. No assistant wife. Just one wife. Is that to understand? Now this is Bible. And I'm reading according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. He have to be vigilant. He have to be sober. He must have good behavior. Hallelujah. That means he must be temperate. He will self-control. Well, have a well-balanced attitude. Hallelujah. He also must be given the hospitality. Apt to teach. It speaks about kind-hearted and generous hallelujah glory to god not given to wine can be addicted to wine or no other alcoholic or, or any other drugs hallelujah so he had to be sober minded hallelujah he no striker it speaks about eager to fight quarrelsome having a bad disposition because he's a leader and he's there to lead the house of God and the saints of God. And it's not easy dealing with the saints of God. Folks are tough to deal with. Even Moses had problems with people. And throughout the church and throughout time, people are tough to deal with. But God would give you a heart and a passion to be hospitable and to treat people kindly. Some folks will need more grace. Hallelujah. But the disposition of the man according to God's anointing upon his life and his grace, he will be able to handle that assignment. Hallelujah. He must not be greedy. Just, you know, grab, grab him, you know, this kind of way. A filthy Luca. Hallelujah. He must not be a brawler. Not covetous. Hallelujah. One that ruled well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Hallelujah. So he can't be a novice. He has to learn to manage well as the head of his home. Hallelujah. He must have a good reputation without and within. Glory to God. For if so if you don't know how to run your own house, how could you actually run the church? For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? And what's happening today? A lot of folks they can run their own home. But they want to be lords over the children of God, over God's heritage. So we see, but God give you the qualifications here. Of the type of man, the type of character he's supposed to have, and how he should conduct himself. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And it went on to describe also the deacon. That's the next office. Likewise, must the deacon be grave, not double tongue, not given to much wine, and not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in pure conscience. Hallelujah. So he had to be proved also. And also his wife also. Can't be slanderous and sober. We've seen many churches now. Almost half of the church have titles. Deaconess, deacon, elder, bishop. And all these titles. But is it, is it in line with God's word? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that's we have to be careful. Now when you are called with assignment like elder or deacon. You must be able to preach the whole Bible and don't compromise. Will you be able to teach certain things? Now, the world we live in, in is very controversial now. And even folks in the church demanding what the pastor should preach. Hallelujah. I hire you. I pay you. And, and they have a problem. And they fail to realize that God is in control and God is still in charge of the church. Now the bishop also must be able to preach and don't compromise. 
Hallelujah. Are you willing to, pro to, to preach Proverbs 14 and 34? Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. You can't compromise. And we find out, I look at preacher after preacher, the love of God, money, and they just stray. They just beat around. They might take one verse and settle on that and, and hope and holler for the rest of the sermon. But a true child of God should be wise. When a preacher stands before you, you must have your Bible, pen, and paper. Listen to his topic and listen to his outline. Otherwise, he will take you around the globe. Say a lot of good things. Well, and, and, and just carry on. And then after you end, you feel happy. We are living in an age folks want to go to church and feel happy. But not convicted. They seldom use the word sin. Hallelujah. But here God is saying here in Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. That's that little word. We see nation after nation strained from the word of God, strained from the things of God, adopting man's lifestyle, making laws, contradicting the word of God. Are you willing to stand and say, thus say the Lord? Are you willing to tell any nation or any people that righteousness exalts the nation? But sin is a reproach to any people. Hallelujah. But there's a remedy for that. So also, you give them the consequences, you give them the remedy. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Are you willing to, to read this and, and, and to preach this? If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the, the pestilence among my people. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. So the problem with man is sin. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Lately we see around the world, we see earthquakes. Right here we see in this nation, we see God didn't shut the heaven. Apparently like the heavens are open. And we have more rain that we could contain. Hallelujah. But it's because of sin. When you rebel against God, the devil come in and make havoc of people. And any nation that turn their back on God, they are opening the doorway for the devil to attack. He come to kill, to steal, and destroy. But if you would pray and see God's face and turn from your wicked ways, then he would hear. And he would. He would hear from heaven. Because he is in control. He's in heaven. And we are on the earth. Then he would hear and he would forgive our sin and heal the land. So when you sin and rebel against God, you pay the consequences. Be not deceived. Whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. Are the bishop willing to warn the people? There are many prophets now. But they're not warning. All they're telling is how uh, about increase. I see you the next president. I see you the next commissioner. You could be the next senator. And folks like that and they're happy. They preach you happy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is it the truth? Hallelujah. It's only the truth which set you free. Now we want to take a quick break here and we return. Glory to God. In times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid, solid rock in time.
praise the Lord glory to God welcome back here so we see firstly that the qualification of the bishop elder or pastor that he must be a man of distinct character now secondly we want to look at um, the bishop must know the major doctrines of the Bible the word doctrines mean teaching hallelujah and glory to God in order for you to qualify as a pastor or bishop or whatever term you call yourself God requires that you be able to teach and exhort with sound doctrine so you must know the word in order to teach something you must know it so you have to what know the word and then you can teach the word now let's look in the book of Jude and we want to read a few verses in Jude hallelujah let's read from verse 1 to 5 it says Jude the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called so you see it's a calling in our lives mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied beloved when I give you all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation those are saved and born again it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints for there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ I will therefore put you in remembrance though he once knew this how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterwards destroyed them that believe not so as a, as a bishop or a pastor you must be able to warn you must contend for the faith because there are many false doctrines and false teachings and various versions that contaminating the true word of God the word of God in some versions are adulterated they are watered down so folks don't have the truth they might have a Bible but not the truth hallelujah so you need something the authorized version hallelujah where you know it was anointed and holy men transfer the various language and Greek and Aramaic and all into the Word of God anointed by the Holy Ghost so the bishop must know doctrine and song doctrines elders who does not know the doctrines of the Bible is just like a lifeguard who don't know how to swim imagine you have a man who ain't know where he's going hallelujah and he's leading and if you are drowning you need someone who could swim to save you but if a man claims to be a lifeguard and can't swim hey not only you were drunk but he were drunk also glory to God so he must know biblical doctrine and we assume that this man is well trained and capable of teaching God's truth in a powerful way folks choose people who they could sing if they could sing well oh hey and make them pastor make them elder because they can sing and dance and pretend some little mumbo jumble hallelujah so this is a serious calling and it is the Bible outlines the qualification of such a one because the call of God is upon that person's life and they have to be careful they are treading on dangerous ground hallelujah let's look at the next scripture here in Timothy concerning studying let's look in first Timothy let's look at chapter 4 that's why he must know from song doctrine let's read a few verses chapter 4 let's read from verse 1 and a few verses now the spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times 
some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put in remembrance those things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the word of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So you must teach sound doctrine as a leader in the church. Also our next scripture here, we could look in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's look at verse 15 to 20. In 2 Timothy. It says that we should study to show thyself approve unto God a workman that needed not be ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as a daughter canker, of whom Hymenus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the feet of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So we find false teachers. So the bishop must know song doctrine. He must be able to teach. Do not be surprised that there are many doct doctrinal controversy. The first Corinthians church struggled over doctrinal issues. Even the Apostle Paul did not accept certain things at first. They had to debate. There was conflict in the church. And they had was to settle certain things. Let's look in Titus. The first chapter. Let's read from verse 4. Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. So we know who Jesus is, right? For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order of the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So elders were ordained in every city. Hallelujah according to God's directive. Hallelujah. If any man be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of righteous or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the stewards of God, not self-will, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality. A lover of good men, sober, just, holy, and temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. So there will be opposition and there will be controversy in the church, but a man have to be taught in God's word. So he have to study to show himself approved. And when he's approved, he have to be approved by God, not approved by men. And before you ordain someone, you have to do it prayerfully, seeking God for guidance. You can't lay your hands suddenly and no man, because th that's why there's so much chaos in the church, because they're not following God's word and the structure that God has ordained. You know, elders must be able to judge opposing theological views. They have to weigh arguments, discern errors, Deal with potentially explosive situation and make songs doctrines. Hallelujah. They must make decisions in the church because, you know, as we see, men creep in. People come in with false doctrines. 
well educated and don't believe the word of God hallelujah so you have to be wise but you have to make sure that you know God's word you have to make sure that God has called you hallelujah and glory to God now there are eight major biblical doctrines you must know in order to teach and defend song doctrine according to God's word are you currently prepared to teach and defend God's word by faith you must know Bible doctrine babyology the doctrine of the Bible you must know the general and specific revelation you must understand inspiration you must understand that the Word of God is infallible without error you must understand the illumination and that's when the understanding and the interpretation of the Bible folks interpret wrong that's why Bible says we ought to rightly divide the word of truth hallelujah you must know theology that means the doctrine of God the existence of God the attributes of God we must know that there's a father there's a son and there's a Holy Spirit you must know the Trinity you must understand the Trinity God the Father God the Son God the Holy Ghost that's how you're gonna teach you must understand the Godhead and the function of each individual each is God but it's one God and there's also one mediator between God and man no other name given among men where a man should be saved but in the name of Jesus Jesus is it Jesus is the Christ the son of the living God now we have a lot of erroneous teaching people teaching it could come to God through any religion is not true so a bishop had to be able to defend the faith he had to contend for the faith hallelujah this is the day we are living in so you must know some theology the doctrine of God and the teaching of the existence of God that he is and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you almost also know Christology the doctrine of Christ that he is divine he is both man and God you must know his office hallelujah and glory to God and his present ministry today you must understand the theophanies that God manifested in the flesh hallelujah God with man hallelujah glory to God you also must understand pneumonology the doctrine of the Holy Spirit the personality of the Holy Ghost and he have deity he's the parakletos he's the one comes along to help us to help the believer so when you being initiated into office as elder or any office in the church just save the Holy Ghost seals you as a child of God and he's the one that comes along to help us and glory to God you must understand the work of the Holy Spirit the revelation of the Holy Spirit in, in, in regeneration you must understand the baptizing and the baptism of the Holy Ghost you must understand the infilling of the Holy Ghost hallelujah as he fills the believers life as he leads and direct us and control us and give us the wisdom we need to serve God and to keep us from evil and abstain from certain things we must understand soteriology the doctrine of salvation the death of Christ the substitutional death of Christ hallelujah he died in our place reconciliation and justification justification by faith and faith alone and not by works hallelujah you have to realize justification comes by faith and it's a free will given by God at the new birth hallelujah glory to God I don't want to be too theological but we must study this Bible is, is what the greatest book known to man and if you study the doctrines and the teachings of the Bible you will be more educated in the things of God hallelujah by God's anointing anthropology a man is the anthropos and the doctrine of sin came through man and the fall of man and the nature of man hallelujah glory to God hallelujah we must understand ecology the doctrine of the church and the relationship between Israel and the church and Christ and the church we must understand eschatology and we go end in that that's a revelation the doctrine of the last things heaven and hell some religions don't believe in hell they don't believe in heaven they believe when they die you might come back a flower you might and people believe all sorts of way out things so if you are called to teach if you're an elder or a bishop you have to be able to teach hallelujah the doctrine of the church in relation to Israel 
you must know that some of the teachings is Im imagery the body of Christ the bride of Christ the priesthood the temple the flock the government of the church the ordinance of the church evangelism spiritual gifts and ministry so this is no easy assignment that's why we ought to study and glory to God as an elder we will work with people who hold different theological views and when it comes and is necessary you have to challenge some teaching you want them just come and pollute false teaching and false doctrine in the church hallelujah a little leaven up leaven up the whole lump one bad seed will spoil the whole group one bad apple forget it and if one man or anyone creep into the church a lot of false souls creep into the church and start to spread false teaching people tend to believe hallelujah glory to god they're quick to believe false teaching and false doctrine that's why there are many cults and false teachers out there so as a leader and a man of god you have to keep in mind that you must know the doctrines and teaching of god's word and you have to be faithful to defend and to contend for the faith hallelujah glory to god you must be clear and scriptures you must understand the scriptures if you don't understand something you can't teach it glory to god also thirdly you have to provide counseling hallelujah glory to god let's look at one more scripture as we come down here to close let's look in the book of acts chapter 15 hallelujah we want to see something here that is impossible to lead anyone without facing problems and opposition the elder must learn to take heed he will face issues dealing with people it's an occupational characteristics of leadership especially in the church now in acts chapter 15 let's read some verses here and certain men came down from jerusalem taught the brethren and said except he be circumcised after the manner of moses he cannot be saved when therefore paul and Barnabas, Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them they determined that paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question and being brought on their way by the church they passed through phoenicia and samaria declaring the conversion of the gentiles and they caused great joy to all brethren and when they were come to jerusalem they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders and declared all things that god had done with them but there rose up certain of the sect of the pharisees which believe saying that it is needful to be circumcised and to command them to keep the law of moses and the apostles and elders came together for to consider the matter and when they had been much disputing peter rose up and said unto them men and brethren ye know how that the how good god made choices among us that the gentiles may should hear the word of god of the gospel and believe and god which knoweth the heart bear them witness giving them the holy ghost even as he did unto us and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith now therefore why tempt ye god to put a yoke upon the necks of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we was able to bear but we believe that through the grace of the lord jesus christ we shall be saved and they so there would be disputing that's why it's different religion different cults they believe one thing and they, they believe the next thing but if the elders don't understand the word of god they fall for doctrine and the religious affiliation hallelujah elders have to watch over the souls of God's people. Our families and our church are at stake. Our young people need teaching and guidance regarding the word of God. They need teaching 
designed for gender and sexuality. Hallelujah. However you were born, God made you that way. Folks don't know what they want to be. So it's a lot of confusion and chaos in the church. And we find the church embracing certain lifestyle is, that is not according to the word of God. You, you must keep in mind that there would be controversy. But an elder, as a protector of God's people, we must know the current information. We must understand the secular and the religious. We must understand biblical gender roles as it relates to issue. The Bible says, a bishop should have one wife. We see women as bishops. Hallelujah. We see them as apostles. Folks just show no title. Is it according to God's word? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Now this is the truth. That's why the scripture we read begin. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. Now if you desire to serve God, it is a good work. Hallelujah. But mo most of folks, when they get into it, they realize it's not that easy as they thought. So a lot of folks with academical qualifications, leaving the church, turning their back on God, and going back out into the world. Hallelujah. They depart from the faith. Taking heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. So if you are called, <laughs> make sure that you are called. Make sure that God call and the Holy Ghost prompt you to serve him. Else you would fall along the way. And woe to that man that fall. Hallelujah. It's a high calling. It's a special calling. It's a divine calling. It's not anybody that can grab anyone and say, Hey, you look like a pastor. You look like a preacher. You look like this. And just put them there. The enemy will make havoc of their life. You can't be a novice. Some folks, they are not novice, but they're over spiritual. Hallelujah. Want praying to be a great one. Hallelujah. Be careful and be not deceived. So we understand the role of and leadership in the church is mandated by God, is outlined plain in scriptures. If you don't understand, study to show yourself approved unto God to be workmen that needed not be ashamed that they might rightly divide the word of truth. It's right here, written according to God's word. Praise the Lord. I know this was a tough subject, but it's the truth. Hallelujah. Now, you've been listening. You might think it is a hard saying, but it's the truth. Only the truth will set you free. You light a man, you make him worse. You tell the man the truth, he might be offended. The word of God is like a two-edged sword. It may cut going and cut coming. Some folks might feel offended. They was offended by Jesus. But he is a Christ. He is the son of the living God. Hallelujah. And when the word of God come and the truth come to you, you will, if you go and hear a preacher and you don't feel convicted, if you don't feel something stirred up in the inside, hey, you need to hear God's word. You'll never forget that some folks went, make a trip, a missionary trip to Africa. And they had chicken. They had chicken. But you know, Africa, the Caribbean thing, the chicken that you eat, it was fed with grass, little corn, some, no chemicals. And that a problem. Because the first time they had real chicken. Because if you're from McDonald's or Burger King or Kentucky, there ain't no real chicken. And if you've been feeding, being fed, fast food. And you never get Bible. I mean, it's kind of hard to handle. Because it's tough. But this is real food. Glory to God. So they were surprised that they, they really took, eat chicken for the first time. And if you get Bible for the first time, don't feel offended. It's good food. It will sustain you. Glory to God. Now, if you are not saved. And you believe somehow God is speaking to your heart. It's a simple process. But it had to be truthful. The God is the God of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man could come unto the Father but by me. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. But if you want to accept Jesus in your heart, just confess with your mouth and believe. Now say this prayer and believe sincerely and the Holy Ghost will come and seal you as a child. Say, God be merciful unto me, I am a sinner. Save me. Wash me in your precious blood. 
and make me your child. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost, if you say that, God would come and save you in the name of Jesus and write your name in the Lamb's book of life. I pray that God bless you richly. Praise the Lord. I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight for our program. I hope that you enjoyed the teaching, Qualifications of Leaders in the Church. If you would like to revert back to this teaching, you can look back on Choice Gospel Radio or Choice Gospel Radio's um, YouTube channel for to reiterate any of the teachings. And if you want to take notes, you should also have a pad and paper each week when the teaching comes on. Cultivating Spiritual Excellence is on each Monday on 92.9 FM at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also download the Choice Gospel Radio app on all Android, Google Play, and iTunes marketplaces. If you would like to reach out to us, you can reach us at our website, mustardseedtabernacle.org, and you can email us at mustardseedtabernacle at gmail.com. If you would like to send us mail, you can also do it via our P.O. Box at Mustard Seed Tabernacle of Praise, P.O. Box 363, Brooklyn, New York, 11203. I hope that tonight your hearts were truly blessed, and I pray that this will not be the end, but this will be the beginning of something new in your life. Father God, I thank you for your word tonight, Lord Father God. I'm thanking you for truly speaking to each and every one of us. I'm praying, Lord, that people will not depart from your faith, Father God, but embrace it. Father God, and they will never be the same again. Regardless of their stance in life, Lord Father God, they will make a change. They will repent, and they will seek your face. I pray, Lord Father God, for all the situations and needs that they may face, Lord Father God, that they will not run, Father God, away, Father God, but they will run to, Father God, your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. My brothers and sisters, join us again on Cultivating Spiritual Excellence. Join us again next week. I'm Brother Marshall. We love you and God bless. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He was.
Hallelujah. Me white. Listen, listen. Jesus wants me. 